fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. I am here with the wonderful Calvin Moseman. Hello, Calvin. Happy last day of summer. <laughs> oh, it is, isn't it? I totally forgot about that. Uh, we're here to continue our beginner training series, so I'll bring up the schedule for that real fast. Today we are doing the gigantic topic of calculations. Uh, we are taking a much smaller stab at it with Calvin today. Uh, functions and operators tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday, because tomorrow is the weekend. Uh, Monday I'll be doing most common script uses. There are some scripts you're going to have pretty much in every single FileMaker database. We'll be talking about those. Tuesday will be document management, always a top, always a popular topic. Wednesday, navigation and screen sizes. So you should have different layout screens generally for things like your iPad and your iPhone and your uh, desktop. Uh, and navigating between layouts and all that jazz, that's a discussion. Real fast, if you'd like to support the channel, we'd greatly appreciate it. For FM Training annual subscription bundles, there are three options. Um, we really like the live stream format, that's why we do do this five days a week. But sometimes having an active hour-long discussion doesn't work for you if you're learning to look, looking to learn FileMaker. So we have these. They're like seven to 24-minute segments. Uh, they cover about pretty much every topic under the sun to become a total, uh, to use a modern term, a noob at FileMaker, or if you're totally new to the platform, to understand it enough to work on your own databases. Uh, I will say this last version includes FileMaker itself if you don't have it already. So, with that being said, thank you, everybody. Welcome. And what are we doing today, Calvin? Today, we're looking at the calculations in FileMaker. Calculations are used everywhere, and there's a whole bunch of different functions. They can do a whole bunch of different things. There's no way we're going to look at everything. So, we're going to look at just take a uh, jump in and take an overview and then maybe look at some examples. If you got some ideas of functions we, or some solutions you want to have us try out, you can throw those in. And I'll ask everybody, does anybody have a guess of what my favorite function is, favorite FileMaker function? And uh, if you want to drop that in the chat, we, we can see if anybody anybody can guess it. And we'll get started. So here I have my, my demo uh file from previously from the previous two days but really the place that we're going to spend most of our time today is going to be in the data viewer so if you've got your tools your uh, developer tools enabled the advanced tools uh, you can go to tools in your menu and then open the data viewer and then there's two uh places in this there's the current and the watch area you want to go to watch and in the watch area you can uh, add a different expressions that you are monitoring. And in here, you have the uh, whole calculation engine to, uh, and to use, and you can pr pull up all these functions to uh, manipulate the data in the app that you're working on. And you don't even have to reference the app. You can just do uh, whatever calculation you want. So let's go and so we we went over how to open up the uh, data viewer and we're going to come right back here. But these calculations are used all over the place. You can have calculation fields. You can have calculations in you have calculations in your scripts. You can have you set your uh, variables with calculations. You have uh, you can use if state uh, calculations in your if statements, calculations for your script results. You have calculations for your script parameters. You have calculations for your layout objects. You can do, use a calculation to generate a button label. You can use a calculation to uh, change the color with a custom function, with a cu uh, custom conditional formatting. Calculations are used everywhere. You can use calculations to hide objects. You can use uh, calculations. You can actually type some calculations right onto the layout and they just work. So if I go over here and say insert, and you can say, I'll say just say get current date. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'll say insert and then date symbol. So current date, any get function, you can type right there onto the layout. And when you go into browse mode, it will just work. So, so if we go over to insert, and time, current time is now on the layout browse. Now we got our current time, insert, and then you can select other. Here are all of our get functions, and you can put any of these in the, in the layout. 
We'll put account name on there. So the uh, function, these calculations are used all over the place. And uh, so it's really good to, to be familiar with them. Let's jump back over to the data viewer. O uh, open up the uh, ex uh, edit expression paint, uh, window and look over here on the left side of, I'm sorry, this is the right side, but the right side of the screen. And we'll look at all of our functions. So this gives you a list of all the functions that are available to you in FileMaker. And it's a searchable list. You, there it's also grouped. So you can go through and see these different categories for these functions. And then we have all of our operators right next to it. So we can use all of these operators to put in a calculation. And, the, and what, what could these calculations be? So you can do number calculations, you can do text calculations, you can do date calculations, time, all of these uh, items. You can even uh, generate uh, containers in here. Let's go ahead and just take a look at these. So text, here we're looking at different text, uh, ways of manipulating text to get a text result. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab a field in here. So we got John Doe as a contact. We can do a few different things here. And let's say maybe we want left. So left is going to get us, uh, our text would be whatever field or whatever text we wanna put in there. And then we say number of characters. Let's say we want uh, four characters. And I say evaluate. And that gives us the first four characters in, in that value. If I do six, we'll see it gets John D. Now left values, if we change that to left values, and get, let's go ahead and say one, it's going to get us Joe and Doe because it is the uh, all the values to the left. And we don't have a list, it's looking for a list. Left words, we'll just change that to left words. And then we're just saying one, we're getting John. So a lot of ways uh, you, to get these different uh, text, we've got left, uh, middle. This is a, a cool one, length. So let's go length. And this will give us the length of the, how, how many characters are in that field. So there's eight characters in John Doe. And so a lot of different ways to look at these. One of my favorites here is trim. That removes spaces after your uh, text. So if somebody, and I don't know if anybody else has users like this that type in a value in a field and then put a space at the end or copy and paste in a space at the end of the value, at the end of a email or the end of a phone number, uh, trim will take that space off of the beginning or the end. So you can put that in your field calculation to clean up the data as people are entering it. So a lot of cool uh, values in here. The next group is text formatting. So here we can change the size, the color. Now, one thing that's a little uh, not very, that's a little disappointing about the, um, uh, what is this called, data viewer, is that your results are never formatted. So if I say here, um, uh, so we can do text format, uh, text format, or let, let's say text size. So we say text size. And we specify that we want this size to be really big. We'll say 48. Is it gonna change our value here? No, we get the same result. But if I copy this, and one of my uh, favorite things in here, in the new, in this newest, one of the newer layout objects is the button bar. You can type a calculation right into the button bar and it will evaluate for it for you. So here is two, uh, values. Now in the one, I'm going to just say start. And in this one, I'm going to say, because we don't really want John's name in a button, we'll say end. 
So now when I go browse mode, we'll notice that this one on the right is taking the button formatting, while this one on the left is taking the formatting that I've assigned to it in the calculation. So lots of powerful things we can do here in the uh, with, with the calculations. We've looked so far at text and text formatting. Uh, do we have any questions at this point? Um, how are the how is the calculation in script workspace different? Oh, uh, that's a good question. So let's go to script workspace. What they they do separate things. So here, let's go ahead and create a new script. And so the script is you could think of this as a list of actions that you want somebody to perform in the in the app in your app. So you could say go to layout. So this is going to be a new new record uh, script. So we're going to say go to layout and we're going to go to the layout company and we're going to say new record. And so it's a real simple script. We're just saying go to this table, create a new record. Now a calculation will never doesn't perform any actions like this. A calculation just figures something out. So if you want it to, uh, well, let's say we, you can have a calculation in the script though. So let's say show custom dialogue. So um, I will put a ca custom dialogue here. Uh, we'll just say message. Now this area here is actually a calculation or it can be a calculation. And you can specify the calculation here. So it opens up your, your area to write this calculation. I'll say hello. And then let's put something in here like, I'll use an operator and, so this is uh, adding to the string. I'll say get account name and I'll put in title. Uh, title case, I guess maybe, I, maybe title case is not an option. And now let's put a return in there. And I will say a new record has been created for you at, and now we're going to put in the get current timestamp. <clears throat> and let's end this nicely with a period. So I'll save that. And let's go ahead and try this. So I'll press play. And so here, hello, admin. Now, it, I didn't tell it I, it was admin. I said, get account name. So it was able to figure that out. And that gave me this message. A new record has been created for you. And it knows what time it is because it, it generated, it used the calculation to calculation engine to figure out the time. It gives me this message. I can now say, okay. So the cal calculations can be used in a script to display dialogue, or you can put an if statement in here. And the if is all dependent on a calculation. If something's true, that has to be Boolean, which means true or false. Uh, so calculations can be used to write a script, but calculations uh, don't perform actions, scripts perform actions. Uh, that's a simple way of thinking about it. Does that answer the question? It looks like it does. Thank you. OK, so let's go back to our data viewer. And we're going to go back to our, uh, so we, we're looking at the text size. We looked at text formatting. Now, the next group is numbers. So here is all of our, uh, if you're trying to calculate uh, a, a, a number, um, you're, we're going to use these for different things in our in uh, reporting and and such. So these are uh, a great use in uh, in the calculation engine. Then we have our dates. If you're doing any calendar work, dates are really great. So here, let's grab this first one, date. So you just put in a number for each of these. So we say, we'll say it's today or it's it's the nine for September. We'll say 23 for the first day of fall. 2023, when we say evaluate now, it gives us that date. And then we can do some kind of calculations in there. Maybe we want to jump to, you could say, get current date. 
Uh, so now here we're giving it the current date, but I want to only pull out the month. So I'll say month. We'll pull out the current date from the month and then we'll add one to it. So we're, we're saying for the date, we want to get the current date, but only pull out the month and then we're going to add one to it. So it'll be the next month and evaluate. Now we have 10, 23, 23. So there's a lot of cool things we can do there for jumping around and getting the right the date that you want for whatever report you're calculating, whatever uh, date you're trying to generate on an invoice. Maybe you're trying to in generate a date due. Maybe uh, a date due is on your invoice or something is the first day of the next month. If you want to get the first day of the next month, you could all you could do uh, get current date plus one. And then because it's the first day, just change the date to the day of the, for the month to one. And then you can say get, uh, say year, and then get, get current date. So this will give you the next day, uh, the next first day of the month. And uh, so interesting uh, options that we have there for generating different kinds of uh, uh, dates. Another thing we can do here, which is cool, is I can put in month name. So here in the sub area, I was getting, I was getting the month as a number. Now I'm saying month name. It's going to give me the name for the month, which is October, since I'm specifying the next month. And if anyone speaks Japanese here, you just put a J on there. And it should give us the month in Japanese. So I don't speak Japanese, but apparently that's what October is in Japanese. So a lot of different uh, options there for dates. Then we have time and timestamp. We can pull the hour, minute, second, and time out of a, a, a string, or we can get the time, specify a time by specifying the hours, minutes, and seconds, and timestamp. We can generate that as a uh, getting the date, putting in, entering a date and time. Container, there's a bunch of different container functions. This is going to uh, be great as you do document management. I think we're talking about document management next week. And I'm not, not sure that we'll get into the, uh, the, uh, the intricacies of using the cal calculation engine for uh, mo modifying uh, container data, but you can do pull out a bunch of different in information from a container field. You can grab the, uh, so I don't have a container in here. Let's go ahead and in this app, there's no container, but I have this one. And here is a container field. And I'll show you a function that I use all the time. So this field is called contact underscore container underscore photo. This is just a copy of FM Starting Point that you can download from fmstartingpoint.com. So I'll get, say, get container attribute. And so this is a great container function. We will specify the field as the container photo field. And then here, there's a few different things we can specify or look for in here. And I'm just going to say file name. And so there's the file name, cmm.jpg. So that was the, uh, the photo name from there. And th But we specified file name. There's got to be some other options here. Now, this is a great thing to uh, take note of. You can, if you go to help in your menu and select FileMaker Pro help, it will pull up FileMaker's help. And you can type in any function in here and get more details on it. So I'm going to type in get container attribute. And here, this is going to list all of our options for selecting different, uh, different attributes. So we can see the file size. Evaluate. So there's, there's our file size in bytes, I believe. So in bytes, yep. And we can get the height and width. And depending on what kind of file it is, obviously a photo is going to give us different values than an audio file. If I put in album, because this is an, an audio file, I think it's just going to be empty. This gives me a question mark because it's not right. 
So we'll so we we've, we've looked at text, numbers, date and time, container. Now Japanese, I to be honest, I've never actually used any of these. JSON. This is a new group that has uh, been added to FileMaker in recent years, and so adding and removing data from a JSON block is uh, uh, really uh, using these functions. It's really helpful there. Do we have any questions uh, at the moment as we go through these? Uh, not about the specific things. We did have someone ask if you were going to cover, we had William Reynolds wanted to know if you're going to cover subtotals today. Subtotals? Uh, like in a sub-summary report? I'm not sure uh, what, we, what we're talking about in subtotals. I'm guessing that's a sub-summary yeah. report. What I was asking is basically if you were going to do a calculation of the sum of a lot of different um, uh, values, for, and if you wanted to be able to search for a subtotal or provide oh, a subtotal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so let's go. just go ahead and look at some calculations in, and we'll just put some, add some data in here, in here. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to create a new table and call this, I'm going to just call it transactions. And in here, for simplicity, I'm just going to delete all of these. And I'm just going to put in number. And that will be, or let's call it amount, because that makes a little more sense. And then I'm going to put in ID company. And this is going to be a text field. And then over here, because uh, I'm not really worried about these, I'm just going to delete this relationship and add a new table occurrence called transactions. And let's give this one a, actually, let's just uh, just use the, the one that was created for me. Okay. And let's allow creation via this relationship. So we set up those transactions. Let's go ahead and delete this. I'll add a new one, and this is going to be our transactions table. So this is really simple, but I think it's going to illustrate how these calculations can work in a in the context of uh, an app that you might have. So let's put in some transactions. We have one for $500, $50, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, $60,000, $70,000, $80,000, $90,000, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000, $500,000, $600,000, $700,000, $800,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000, $1,000,000,
uh, I'm sorry. Then I get a list of all of those values. Now you'll notice I, I selected by accident the ID company. And it just it's a bunch of repeating values. And obviously it's going to be repeating because we're looking based on that ID that's specified. Now, if I say unique values and give it that list, it's only going to give me one one item. Now, where would this be uh, come in helpfully? Uh, where would this be helpful? So I'm going to go over here and create a new field. And I'm just going to call this one uh, type. And spine it to type. Oh, did I grab the wrong thing? Let's go to type, browse. And we're going to say per, uh, products, products, and services. So we got two of products and two of services. Now, how, what, what's some things that we can do with this? Let's point this to type. And now because we're only getting unique values, let's remove unique. So if we just say list, we're going to get a list of everything. So maybe we want to know what types of transactions we had with this particular company. Uh, we get that list, but if we say unique, unique values, then we only get a list of each of those items once. And uh, so what's some other things we can do here? Let's go to sum. So sum is going to summarize that data. So transactions and then amount. Let's evaluate. Now this summarized or, or total added together all of these values and gave me the total. So I think that's the sub uh, summary that we're looking for. Now, if we're doing a, a, a subtotal in a in a report, that would be a different conversation using sub summaries in a list view. But for summarizing related data through a relationship, this calculation is going to work great. So the uh, you can save this data in the company information. So you have it uh, to reference later, and you know how many uh, transactions there or how much uh, they. Um, how much was spent with them. Now, another cool thing we can do is count. And count actually gives us the total number of transactions. So we could say what the count is. We can also go average and oh, average. And here we get an average of those transactions. So a lot of uh, really cool functions here. Now, the th does that answer the subtotal question? Uh, do we have any follow-up questions? What I was actually asking was, if you mm -hmm. had a list of invoices, for example, and yeah. you wanted to just get a subtotal for the invoices that were for X company, as opposed to all, all, the, all of this, how do you do that? Yeah, so in this case, we are filtering out. So if I go to another company, and I'll put in another transaction here, and say, I won't put in types, we don't need types. So here we'll see that our, and let's change this back to sum, evaluate. So this summary, you'll notice that it, the, the data viewer just gives us the context of where we are in the, in the app right now, this layout. And so we'll see the sum of the transaction amount for this company, the Jackfruit company is 1390, 1390. If we go look at the company incorporated, then it is 10,118. So this is giving us, because uh, we're looking through that relationship, it's summarizing the total number of, uh, of the total of those transactions for that one company and, uh, and giving us those totals. The, uh, uh, so, so because we're looking through that relationship, it is uh, one company at a time. Uh, any other questions? We do, actually. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Someone would like to see the trick for the last day of the month, if you wanted the very last day of the month. The last day of the month. The last day of the month. So did, did anyone guess what my favorite calculation is? Um, someone guess? said let. Oh, somebody was right. <laughs> let is my favorite calculation. <laughs> okay, so let's use a let calculation. And let is really awesome because it lets you 
figure different uh, things out in an order and set variables, uh, whether you uh, reference them other where, elsewhere or not. And uh, so we're going to use let to figure out the last day of the month. <clears throat> so I'm going to say the month. And actually, the let's give it. Now, one thing you can do is uh, you can have these variables have a name like date. And I'm just going to use get uh, current date here. But if you use something like this, uh, like the like date, it can confuse it because this is the same name as a function. So I'm just going to say the date. And I'm going to get say so equals uh, the month. And I'm going to say month and then the oops, the date. And then I'll say the month. Okay, so let's evaluate. So here we're getting our current month. And uh, and this is just based on, we can put any date value in here and uh, we want it to be able to work. But for now, I'm just putting in the current date uh, to, to figure this out. So let's go ahead and say, so we got the month and I'm going to say the day. Now I'm going to do the day as one. And then I'm going to do the year. And I'm going to say year. Uh, the date. And one thing that I like to do here when I'm figuring something out is to list all my variables. I don't do this all the time, but if I'm working on something and having, I want to see what all, the value of each variable, this helps. So here we go. So I can see here, there, this is my result. Sometimes I'll separate this with two. So this is the result. And this is everything that I'm using to get that result. Now, I know I don't want the month. So I, I, let's start with the first day of the month, uh, the first day. And so then we get date. And then I'm going to say the month, the day, and the year and the first day. Let's just put that back in here. So that's right, the first day of the month. So now let's get uh, the next first day. And I like to keep these all in order, all aligned, because it's easier for me to read that way. I don't get lost so much. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm holding down the option tab. So if you just tab, it's going to take you to the next uh, thing in the tab order on this window. But if you hold Option Tab, it pushes the it inserts that tab. Okay, so the first next so the next first day. So we'll say uh, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to say plus one. So now, if I put in that, now I get the next day the day the first day of the next month. And now let's do one more. We're going to say the last day. Last day. And I'm going to do uh, the next first day minus one. So evaluate. And there's our last day of the month. And will this work in for other dates, let's just try it out. I'm going to add a date field to our app over here. And just drag this in here. Uh, I don't want it as a transaction. Actually, we can leave it in transactions. I'll say date. Change this to an actual date field. Say OK. Uh, we'll do date. And now I want this in here. Let's put that date in and let's give it a drop down list. Do you think we can break my calculation? Let's move this right here. Go to browse mode. So here we, and now we'll point this to the transaction. Now, because of the way we have this set up, 
uh, it's only going to reference the first transaction and it's empty right now. So let's go ahead and enter a date. So there we go. Ooh, why is it not working? Okay, now, now refreshed. Uh, so here we have the last day of the month that worked. Let's see if it works on a 31 day month. Let's go ahead and open up the transactions because it's not refreshing right away, which isn't getting us quite what I wanted. And let's just add that date into here. Hold down the option key to duplicate, select the date, and then select the drop down list as, or the drop down option as a calendar. So it works for July. Will it work for February? 28 days. Now let's look, see if it works for a leap year. And it works for a leap year. So in each, and will it work for the last day of, of the last, uh, the last date in the year? So we are saying, so here we're saying 12, 12, uh, 2023 is giving us the right year in here as well. So that's a little calculation that can help you uh, figure out the last day of the month. Now I'm going to disable that my list so I just get the result that I want. And so this is uh, this is how I like to to set up my let functions. Okay, yeah. so we have more questions. So all right, um, is a list of numbers considered to be a number or text since it contains returns? Example: Does get value with list of numbers one give you a number or text? For a variable, i.e. need to explicitly state get as number, get value, list of numbers, comma, one, question mark. Yeah, so let's try this out. So some of these things well, you, you'll, you'll just want to experiment with and see what happens. So let me go. So what, essentially what the question is, is if I have a list of values like this, is that text or is that a number? Now, uh, I can say get as number. And let's, what, what do you think is going to happen when I say evaluate? Does anyone have any guesses? Will it remain a list or will it do something else? I think it's going to do something else. It just puts it as one long number. So when you have a list, it's reading it more as text than as, as a number. And uh, so here we've got different values. If we say get value, and here's our list of values, and I'm going to say value three and evaluate. Now let's get 5,000. And you'll see that that corresponds with the third record in here. And if we select all, uh, there we go. And then if we say uh, get as number, we'll notice that it, is, it stays as it is. You can say uh, get as text. And in, in these uh get as are are different ways of the of the app evaluating different uh different field types or uh, different uh values that you're passing in the calculation so uh usually i'll use a get as date or get as time or get as timestamp when i want to make sure that it's reading that as those different things uh, and so when we're seeing a list of numbers, that's, it sees that as text. And as we pass those values and evaluate them, we're going to see each individual value can be evaluated as a, as a number. Uh, any other questions? I think you're good. So okay. where were we in the list of calculation options? Yeah, so we got on to, oh, we were back to dates. And uh, you'll just have to put your own date in at the beginning. So, but something like this. Now, if you are going to use get the last day of the month quite often, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to use a giant calculation like this every time you want to get the last day of the month, especially if you're going to do it a lot. So what FileMaker has is this amazing thing called the um, custom functions. Let me see if I can find and the uh, Richard shows this off, so I'm sure I can show this off to everybody. And if we go to this website called, here we go. So this is Brian Dunning 
dot com slash custom functions. And so if we go here, oops, we can go find any search for different custom functions, find a bunch of different custom functions. Uh, so if we say last day of the month, last day of month. So here's a is last day of month. That sounds like it will give us, it'll tell us if something's the last day of the month. Here, last day of the month, this uh, is going to, uh, is, a little, is similar to ours and it will, so it, this does pretty much the same scenario. It takes the, the, but it's saying the current date. So the last day of the current month. It's not letting you enter or specify which month you want to specify. So, but so this is pretty similar to what we did. Use a let statement or a let function to specify the month, year, and day, and then spelled that out is the result. Uh, so here's if you want to expand what the what FileMaker can do uh, in the in your functions, you can use custom functions. Uh, and they don't have to come from here. You can write your own custom functions. In fact, this could be a custom function. Let's go ahead and just make this into a custom function. I'll go over here to File, Manage, Custom Functions. And I'll paste this in here. And we'll say last day of month, the date. And so now, and then I, I just need to specify where we submit the date in the, uh, in the calculation itself. I'll say run, uh, or I'll say okay, and save it. And now when I go in here and reference my custom functions, now if I go down here, I'll see there's a new custom function area. And I can put in a date here, get current date, and it gives me the last day of the month. So we took this longer let function or, uh, to, to calculate the last day of the month. And then we simplified it down into just a custom function that we can reference anywhere that we want. And custom functions, that's another place that uses calculations. We got aggregate functions. So we already talked about this average, count, list, max, min, uh, maximum or minimum, et cetera, sum. We've got repeating. So this is uh, really critical in using repeating fields. I don't use repeating fields very often, except uh, I'll use them sometimes with calculations. A calculated repeating field can be really powerful. And the extend is something for uh, specifying in a uh, repeating calculation. Uh, we could spend an entire hour on that, so I'm not going to jump in there. We've got financial, uh, getting the uh, using interest and payment to calculate different things. Trigonomic, uh, trigonometric calculations. We get this uh, uh, options here. We get our logical uh, calculate uh, functions. So here, get nth record. This is a cool one. If we specify get nth record, and I'm going to say the field that we want is company, and the number is two, and let's go to browse mode. Now, if we'll see in this in this found set, the Jack, uh, Jack company is the second record in the found set. So as I go through, it didn't change. But if I change, if I omit jackfruit, then it goes to the uh, the second record now in the found set, which is the company. And if I change the sort order, so we'll say company in descending order, now it's giving me ABC company because it's now the second record. So get nth record is really powerful. Uh, I usually specify what number through a, a variable and it's used, I usually reference it in a script or in a, now that we have while fun functions, that is, uh, an awesome option there. So uh, logical ones. Another logical one is is empty. And I use this all the time in scripting. If uh, is empty, then give me, uh, uh, let me know. So here it isn't empty. So we could do something like, uh, let's go create a new record. And we could use this function is empty 
to maybe give some custom formatting to, or I'm sorry, conditional formatting to the label. Let's make the label red if it's empty. So we go browse mode. So now it's red, but when I say new, it uh, is, is empty is no longer true. So it changes the color. So is empty, really powerful fun fun function that we use a lot. Um, now we get to get, there's a huge list of get functions. Should go through there and just read them all because there's so many different things we can get out of these uh, things about your, uh, your system, your current window. We say get uh, your sort state. So let's just look at that one. And what does zero mean? So remember what we do if we don't know this, we go to our FileMaker help and I'll pull that back over here, paste that in, get sort state. And so what does zero mean? Zero means uh, if the record is active in the table, uh, in the active table are not sorted. So the, uh, so once we sort them, let's say sort, and now it's one. So the, uh, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things to look at here that you can uh, do, that you can use to figure different things out. So the, and, and I believe I mentioned this at the beginning, any of these options, you can take and copy the get, uh, you don't have to copy the get part, just the, what the inside of the function, go into layout mode, and then paste that, I'll just paste it right here. Paste it here and then put curly brackets. Oops, escape. Let's put a, I think it's two curly brackets on either side. And then FileMaker sees that as a function. So as, as a get function. And so instead of saying get file name, it put in the file name, which is demo. So really awesome thing you can do there with the functions. Uh, then we've got design. We can, oh, this is, some people don't realize you can do this. If we say base table names and say get file name. So I'm telling you to get the current file name and tell me the base table names. Evaluate. Here is a list of all of my tables from Manage Database. Did anyone here not know you could do that? So... That's giving me all the base tables. One, two, three, four, five, company, contacts, members, transactions. Okay. Base table names for the current file demo is uh, right here. We can also do this with, uh, you can get the field names. You can get the database names. Let's see what, with database names. It's getting the two databases that are open right now. Get the layout name. We could evaluate. Uh, I have to do get file name. Get file name. File name. There we go. Evaluate. Now we're getting our uh, uh, the list of all of the layouts. And how would this be useful? How would this be useful? Well, what you can do is you could set up a uh, a button that would show the list of names, and by by getting the layout name, you could pass that layout to a script. And just by giving it the script name, it could navigate to a, a given layout uh, with the layout name in it. Now, once we uh, next, we have mobile. So there's different mobile options. You can get your location. But these are all for uh, on your iOS device uh, with FileMaker Go. We've got custom functions. We talked about that briefly. There's only one custom function here. And then after custom, we get our external functions. So these are for the plugins that you have installed for this version of FileMaker. So on this computer, I have FMBooks Connector, the MBS plugin, and FMBooks uh, Connector, the PC FMBooks Connector uh, plugins all installed. So these are plugins that I use. And if you search for them, so if I say MBS, so oh, MBS, you'll see the MBS plugin option come up. Uh, so they, they are searchable, they are in there. 
And so that's a quick overview of those different function, the, the, the calculations and the different functions and some different things we can do with those calculations uh, with dates, text, numbers, et cetera. Uh, do we have any, any questions there? We went through that really fast. I mean, as fast as you could. We're still like an hour yeah. in. So it tells you how much there is to do with calculations. Yeah. So I was thinking we would uh, go through our summary maybe a little faster, but we didn't. So, But in the last little bit of time that we do have, I'd like to look at FM starting point ah, and kind of see some different options, different ways that we're using calculations because we're using calculations everywhere. But if we just look at our custom functions, this is a list of all the custom functions that we're using. And each of these custom functions is a calculation. So like this one, bold green, we take textile add, and then we give it a color, and then we make it bold. Uh, so this is making any text that we want green and bold. And a bunch of different other options in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the layout mode. And we'll notice uh, we've got these eye icons. Each one of these eye icons is a a calculation for hiding that object. So right now, if I looked in my object tree, we are looking at the text or this button that has the text account name. So that's a merge uh, field. And we can say hide object here. And we'll see if we just kind of look at this, if is empty ID account or window mode equals one, then it hides. So, so the hiding, the hiding feature on here can confuse people because if if the answer is true, if it's one, then you hide it. If it's zero, then you display it, which is kind of a backward way of thinking. Usually we say one, show, or one, yes, and zero, no. So let's go ahead and see what how we might make this a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and I'm just going to use a let because I like let. So we'll say let. So if uh, no content, uh, no account. So here we'll say, so there's no account here. And the other option, window mode equals one. So remember, uh, what, what is window mode equals one? I just happen to know this. So uh, I'm just going to put in find mode. So the, uh, window mode equaling one is find mode. So put that in there. And then here I will put in two more. I'll say show. And I'll say this is uh, show is zero. See, I'm get, even getting it backward in here. Hide is one. So he, now I can say uh, if, so this is kind of an if. So if no account or find mode, then then uh, hide or otherwise show. So that was kind of my, uh, oh, I'm gonna cancel out of here. I do wanna save what was originally there. So this is kind of a, a way of maybe running, putting the calculation in there that's maybe a little easier to read as you're looking at this to see what it's actually, uh, what how that show and hide is working. Let me say, okay. Oh, something's messed up. Oh, I want to comment the old one out. We'll say save. And you know what? I typed in something. I accidentally typed in. I lost all my work. Oh, I can't do it. So I accidentally typed and lost all my work. Let me try that one more time. Now I'm feeling ridiculous. Remember show is gonna be, show is going to equal zero. Hide is gonna equal one. And now we're gonna say if no account or find mode, then hide else show. And let's do that. And let's do that. Okay. Now I'm going to go to browse mode. And so we see if this is this new company, if I select uh, remove it, then it, it's hidden. If 
I do a search and grab another company, then it displays. And if I go to find mode, it disappeared entirely and I've got a field now that I can type into. So that's uh, one way that we're using. So we're using hide, uh, using the calculations to hide things in here. Uh, we can also use it here. We're using it to hide, it's very similar calculation. We're using it to hide the button if there's no phone number. So if we go over here and remove this phone number, then we'll see that this grayed out. So we can't select it. Uh, we also use calculations over here in the in the scripts. Let's just look at the startup. We're looking at the we use the function get application version, and then we didn't talk about this, but pattern count. We're just looking for the word server in that result. And if it's on server, if server is found there, we're saying greater than zero, then we're exiting the script. We don't want the script to run if it is running on server. And then we, so we use it for the ifs, we use it for this dialogue. It's all over the place. So that was a, a quick demo of the calculations, some different things you can do with calculations, how calculations can be used in an app. Uh, do we have any uh, fo any final questions or final yeah. thoughts from so, anybody? So the calculation result is the same with the let function? Question mark. Is the same? Um, yes, yes. So when we changed that that script, we weren't actually or changed this um, calculation. I was just rewriting it to uh, to make it something that was easier to read. I like with, with these show with these because hiding is kind of difficult to think about sometimes. I like to put the show and hide in here. And so that just makes it a little easier for me to follow and for somebody else to come up behind me and see what's going on. Yeah now the way that hiding works in FileMaker it's a bit like double negatives. Do you think about yeah. what the not never means? You're like what? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but the result's the same. Yeah, so the re result was the same, just the way that I wrote it was a little different to sh show how you can use the show and hide variables in a let function. I like the let function. <laughs> it's pretty nifty. Any other questions before we head out, people, or are we good? I think we're probably good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Calvin. Seriously, it's been awesome having you on. I'm sure we'll see you again at some point. But yes. uh, thank you very much for coming and for teaching us. Everybody, Not we will problem. see you Monday. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everyone. Goodbye. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir! Oh,